Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. Good day to you all. Today I wanted to talk about gear considerations starting with pants. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a really long time, I did a gear considerations video long in the past, which I since have delisted because uh, although I feel like there's some decent information in it, there was a few things I feel like I could have expanded on better. And so that's what this is. I'll be kind of rebooting the series, which isn't really a series, it'll be really short. But as I said, wanted to talk about pants today. Uh, pretty much just talking about the importance, uh, in my personal opinion, of having uh, good pants for uh, serious use, whether that's like whatever you'd want to define that as, whether that's LARPing, which, uh, you know, I'm LARPing right now, <laughs> or, you know, just Second Amendment purposes, uh, hunting, etc., that sort of thing. So uh, this will primarily be a comparison um, because in my experience, the two big pants I would recommend for that sort of thing are going to be either these Leo Kohler ones, which I'm wearing right now, which I'll talk about. These have, they're slowly becoming uh, kind of my preferred pants, even over Cry's, which is the other one I'm gonna be talking about. It's Cry style pants, actual Cry pants. The ones I showed earlier in the introduction are my uh, Cry knockoff pants in the JSDF camo pattern, which is pretty cool. But uh, we can talk about those just even using those, even though they're not true Cry's, because it's the cut that matters. So. The first thing that I would say is pretty important when you're looking for serious use pants is uh, to have integrated knee pads. Uh, this is getting really common nowadays to have pants with integrated knee pads. In the case of Cry's, you have a knee pad insert. Uh, you can get either a soft one or a hard one. And the way that goes is you just kind of Velcro it in and uh, it just sits, it's like a cap that sits out. Works quite well. However, one thing I've found over uh, a while, especially now that I've gotten these Leo Kohler pants, um, is while I'm hunting, which I am right now, thought it'd be a good time to do the video, an issue I've come across is, especially when I'm going downhill, the cry pants, uh, the knee pad will want to sh slowly shift to the side. Now you can remedy that uh, by tightening it down, and you should have it tightened down, but I noticed that if you have it tightened down enough to where the knee pad on the cries doesn't move whatsoever, then it starts to get really hot around that area, of course, because there's no, you know, it's just kind of trapping everything there. It uh, accumulates sweat. Uh, and it, if you tighten it up too much, which you also shouldn't do, uh, it'll start to chafe. So you don't want to do that. The reason I like these Leo Kohler, and, and I've heard uh, some good things about UF Pro pants as well, I should mention. I, I don't have personal experience with them, but I've heard really good things about them. So those might be one you'd want to look into as well. But at least on these Leo Kohler pants, these are a little bit different of a style where you still have an integrated knee pad. However, it is a soft knee pad. It comes with the, the actual pants themselves. Um, and it is removable as well for like when you need to wash it, but uh, it's just kind of more in the pants themselves. It's larger. And uh, I noticed that this style of knee pad does not get uh, that weird issue where they kind of shift to the sides as the cries do. Uh, one thing about these is these don't have any adjustment compared to cries where you can adjust how high or low they sit or how tightly they sit, as I was just mentioning. So in my case, as I said, the tightness doesn't really matter with how large these are and how they wrap around your knee. Uh, but what does matter is how low they sit. For me, these actually do sit a little bit too low. When I take a knee and actually crouch, they're fine because it just kind of shifts that way. But when I'm actually walking, this sits ever so slightly low. Like my actual knee is right here and the pad is generally just barely sitting at it. It works, but it definitely could be better. So that's something you'll want to keep in mind with that. Um, but having any type of integrated knee pad, I would say is a very large improvement over having the, uh, the regular or older style where you have a Velcro strap that goes around your leg. Uh, what I found with those, because I did wear those for a, quite a long time, years back that uh, those would always either ride down eventually as you're running with them or kind of similar to what I was mentioning you don't want to do with the cries where you tighten them down too much similar with those types of knee pads if you tighten them down too much they'll start to chafe and uh, cut off circulation in the worst case and they just have major issues with just shifting around even then so absolutely would say that it's worth because these pants with the integrated knee pads are always significantly more expensive but I would say it's definitely worth it once you actually get out there and start using them uh, you quickly don't want to ever go back to regular styles of pants another thing that is imp 
important that is probably pretty obvious uh, is having a cargo pocket uh, just to carry extra stuff not you're not carrying like you know you don't want to wear just like skinny jeans or whatever um, one thing about these Leo Kohler pants um, that is kind of odd and I don't want this to be like uh, just a review of Leo Kohler that's not what this video is um, but these have a, a strap here you can see it's a little loose right now uh, you can tighten this up uh, what this is intended to be is to tighten things down um, if you're wearing a lot or if you're carrying a lot I should say in your pocket that is supposed to help tighten it down in my experience I it doesn't really matter it just kind of gets in the way but I leave it there uh, and I just have it kind of tied down I think this one may have came loose a little bit it did uh, but usually I just have this tied down a bit that way it doesn't dangle around and it can't get snagged on anything another important point I would say you should look for in tactical pants there's that buzzword but um, having a reinforced seat is very beneficial that's the area kind of between um, the legs uh, the reason for that I found this out through researching the Gorka suit which I do have one of they're pretty decent but they do have a few issues um, they are prone to blowouts uh, right there where the legs connect because uh, that's not really reinforced in any way in the case of these Leo Kohler uh, they are and the cries I would have to go back and check I don't have them on hand right now of course because I'm wearing these but I do believe those have a special like uh, stitching cut there which works too one other important point is uh, the belt loops themselves you'll want to make sure you get pants that well I guess you don't necessarily need this but something to keep in mind is to look for pants that have larger belt loops especially if you want to wear an inner outer belt in my case I do prefer the larger padded belts but I know those inner outer belts are a lot more popular nowadays so if you want to go with that route make make sure that you get pants or get a belt that's small enough I should say or get pants that have large enough belt loops to accommodate that um, that's probably a no-brainer but I know that it's kind of an easy one to overlook as well um, moving down kind of not going in any particular order here uh, one thing I do like about these Leo Kohler pants uh, that the cries don't have though they do have a way to tighten um, on the cries I should say they have a way to velcro down the bottom of the pant leg onto your boot uh, one other thing nice though about the Leo Kohlers is they do have an actual built-in gaiter uh, which you can tuck in uh, very similar as I mentioned earlier Gorka suits uh, the Gorka pants have a similar setup this is great especially as I am out in the wilderness at the moment uh, really helps significantly it's a very minor feature overall but uh, huge difference so you don't get tons of crap in your boots and all of that so that about covers everything for what to look for one last thing I would say, and this especially applies to the cry style of pants when you're considering purchasing them over the actual cries. One thing you really need to look out for, I've seen a lot of people recommend the Emerson gear. Uh, they also are sold on Amazon as the Elite Tribe pants. I own a pair in Woodland just because it's a, it's a cool camo. It's not that good of a camo, but uh, one thing you really need to look out for, uh, you should absolutely check your pants or just look for reviews or whatever. Uh, try to make sure that they're either made out of a infrared compliant uh, you know material uh, or just test it yourself if it has IR remission in the case of those cry style pants I have well those elite tribe ones they do glow uh, you have a kind of stretchy area around the knee pad on cry pants and on those knockoffs that pretty much always glows on those um, Japanese ones I have it doesn't because they don't have it because they're in the g4 style so if you can find the g4 pants you know you might have your mileage may vary to put it short but that is just something to be really really careful about regardless of what option you choose just really look out for the materials obviously if you go with cry itself that's very expensive but that doesn't have an issue with glowing so that is absolutely a gigantic point you'll need to keep an eye out for and that's probably actually the biggest one that I see people kind of overlook because they recommend these cheaper pants that for uh, if you're just going to the range to like train in them and practice in them and you don't want to like actually damage really expensive pants I get it then that would be a good option for it but um, if you're actually worried about that then I, you, you should be then absolutely make sure to kind of keep an eye out for that and the same with these Leo Kohlers as well these don't have an issue with infrared uh, glowing off as well so that about covers it uh, hopefully this was informative just a few points to kind of keep an eye out for when you're looking for pants it's not really 
that complicated. Uh, I would say the biggest things are just integrated knee pads. Uh, gaiters are a plus. I wouldn't say gaiters are absolutely necessary, but integrated knee pads I would say are a must have. And then just making sure that they're not gonna glow and give off your position uh, when they're viewed under night vision is massive. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you all found this informative. I will probably have some more gear consideration videos coming out soon. Uh, this won't be like the old series I did where I just kind of like talked about my loadout. Um, it will be a little bit of that, of course. This R1 was already kind of that. Um, let me know if you have any other comments or suggestions or anything. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.